That's actually a really good and difficult question to answer. Um, a lot of uh, work we've seen so far with artificial intelligence has actually been in healthcare, as well as financial services, legal services. But over the last 18 months or so, we've actually seen a proliferation across almost every industry. So we'll actually see artificial intelligence already being used in like media and entertainment, in uh, talent management, like human resources, in sports management. So it's, it's running the gambit. Where it'll be four or five years from now, to be honest, I don't know. I liken it to kind of like the iPhone, that no one could have really predicted how much it would change our lives, the, you know, the, the proliferation of apps. I, all I will say is that 10 years from now, pretty much every product or service will have some component of artificial intelligence to it. So that's a great question. I think you know, everyone will tell you there's probably a mix of good and bad to it. Um, we're trying to really emphasize the good. And I think the ultimate thing with artificial intelligence is the ability to actually even remove this whole micro-segmentation and provide a more personalized experience. And that could be advertising, but it could also be healthcare. Thinking about that you can now prescribe the right you know, drug for treatment at, for you based on your genetics, based on your age, health history, and appropriate dose. So I think this will be quite the game changer. And I think in terms of socialization, hopefully it will free up people to work on more complex tasks, more, more complex type of thinking, just progress the human experience. Well, that's a good question. I mean, our goal is not to take away jobs. Will some jobs be automated? Probably. I mean, we've already seen some of that like in the fast food industry, but not because of AI. I, I think what we have to do is prepare ourselves for the jobs of tomorrow. I think we're moving away from like, if you were to think pure requirements to more interactions, how do we actually test those types of things? How do we actually come up with these great ideas? I think for the, the future people, for future workers tomorrow, the focus will have to be more on one of these, what we call machine learning, cognitive thinking, as well as artificial intelligence type of skills. I think the ability to think critically and actually come up with new ideas and do deeper analysis is what's really gonna be the driving force. Absolutely, right? This is all cutting edge, it's new stuff. We're learning things as we go forward. I think that we need policies, we need you know, a standard set of best practices so that we're all working towards the same goal and to make sure that we are doing things that are for benefit of society, not just kind of random events. I, I, I think that there's some obviously fears out there. Maybe some are justified, some are unjustified. Change is hard for everybody. But could some of this stuff be misused? Uh, potentially, depending on what people really do. I mean, we're, obviously we as IBM are not trying to do any of these things. But I think we do need, we need some levels of standards, some levels of regulations, again, so that we're on the same page, that there's a unified understanding of what's appropriate and not appropriate to use artificial intelligence for. Sure, absolutely. So uh, we're sponsoring an XPRIZE competition. So we're really trying to get people to think more about you know, artificial intelligence in the next wave. And so we're, we're working here to actually figure out what could those big ideas, big products actually be. And to motivate them, we're obviously offering the XPRIZE. We're partnering with IT, we're partnering with TED to try and facilitate the understanding, the awareness, and the building of these ideas.